What is happening people? Welcome back to another video. That feels so good to say after a year of no uploads. I've had a lot of messages from you guys about where I've been, what I've been doing, and to be fair, I owe you guys an apology. So I'm sorry, but I'll explain my absence in the next video. For now, I've got an exciting video for you guys. As some of you have may seen on my Instagram, I uploaded a short video of myself and my friend on top of the Egyptian pyramid. So stick around because I'll be explaining how we illegally scaled the Egyptian pyramid at night, including the planning, the pressure the night before, sneaking through the desert, the climb itself, what would happen if we got caught, and almost getting seen by an armed guard patrolling the pyramid. Now, before we get to that, we've got to start from the very beginning when Egypt was in discussion, myself and my friend. Egypt's been on my hit list for a while for two main reasons, the pyramids, obviously, and currently under construction in Egypt is Africa's tallest building. Now, if you don't know, Egypt is in Africa. So myself and my friend, we had an eye on the construction for a while. We wanted to hit it when it was at its max height. So when the time was right, we agreed on dates and after a turbulent flight, we touched down in Egypt. Now, the first few days were pretty relaxed. We just kind of explored Egypt. We appreciated the culture. We ate the foods. And I post a lot of stuff on my Instagram that I don't post on YouTube. So if you want to keep updated from my travels and stuff, do follow me on Instagram right here. Now, after the first couple of days, we were chilled out, we were relaxed, but it was time to get planning for the two main reasons we were here. Now, to start things off, we decided to hit the site, the construction site, and we decided to play it by ear. I've done several construction sites, so as my friend. So we thought we'd have an early night, wake up in the morning, get in an Uber to the construction site, and we did. But when I hopped out of that Uber, I was overwhelmed, and I'll tell you why. It wasn't just one building that was under construction. It was an entire city. Like I'm talking, this is massive. To get from one side of the site to the other is miles. It will easily take you over an hour to walk from one side to the other. And after some recon, we quickly realized that there's actually security huts within like 30 meters of the entire construction site. We thought, you know what? Let's not loiter around because it was quite a deserted area as it was. So we found an entry spot. We hopped over the first gate, slowly making progression, very slowly looking around to make sure no one would see us. Every step of the way, we were very careful, slow movements. We were looking around for activity. We were checking what fences would be quiet, what fences would be noisy and potential ways in without having to obviously go over a fence. Now, at one point, we were very still and this happened. <laughs> It's not good at all, is it? Oh, that was bad. Now, as you can expect, security come out, he's seen us, and when he approached us, there was a language barrier. So we played the dumb foreigner, we showed him maps on the phone, and we, 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 we kind of blagged it, saying we're just trying to cut across the site. Now, I don't know what happened, but he went off prob probably to go inquire to his boss or something like that. Now, we just literally just disappeared into the shadows. We ended up just clambering through like the underground infrastructure of this building, not even the building, the site. The building was like so far ahead, and after an hour, we finally got to the basement of the building, and we quickly realized that the building there were people in the building. In the stairwell itself, there was security sat there and we went past him, but we didn't realize. We only realized when we got a few floors up and he started shouting at us. You can hear it in this clip. So we ignored him, we raced up the stairs, we hid in a floor for a bit. And at this point, me and my friend were really tired. We still had a lot of time to kill before sunrise. So we thought, you know what? Let's kip, let's sleep. Ended up sleeping on concrete floor, which was brutal. My spine was literally crooked. I sacrificed a beautiful, comfortable bed in our accommodation for the tallest building in Africa. So we had to do this. We had to pull it off. We woke up, sunrise was approaching. We were going up the stairwell, making our way to the roof. There were a few workers on the roof. Sorry, not the roof, the floors below the roof, but it was nothing major. We were on top of the tallest building in Africa. The view was incredible. The roof was huge. So our objective now was to get to the tip top of the building. There's the crane at the top and then you've got the crane arm. So we wanted to get right at the very top. <laughs> No one was on the roof, nothing can stop us. The sun was about to rise, everything was just perfect until. 
Oh man, this guy had no idea. How do you explain to someone, like I come all the way from London to climb this, there's no way you're not allowing me to do it. Furthermore, there's no way I'm letting a guy with a ciggy in his mouth tell me that I can't climb the crane. How do I even get the point across to him? Me and my friend were so confused, we didn't know what to do. So we ended up chilling on the crane base for about five minutes until we came up with a solution. Now he was adamant it was too windy, he said, take photos where we were. There is no way I've gone through all of that just to go halfway up. So we came up with a plan. We thought, you know what? Let's go back in the building. Let's sleep and set an alarm for what we thought was his lunch break. So back to concrete it was. A few hours passed. We woke up. We've gone to the roof now, gone up the crane, and we were right. He wasn't there. Minor delay, but the ascent begins. Getting out of the site was absolutely fine. We had these hard hats, so we just blended in with workers, got out of the site and got an Uber home. We were well happy about our photos, mission success. Now, fast forward the day, the bit that you've all been waiting for, the pyramids. Now to say the least, the pyramids were scary. We had to be logistical and we had to be on time. There was no room for failure on this one. For one, it was my friend's last day in Egypt. So if we failed, he would have had to get a flight home the next day and whether I did it solo, questionable. And number two, most importantly, we didn't want trouble with Egyptian authorities. I did not want to get banged up in an Egyptian prison. If you get caught climbing the pyramids, I believe it's a minimum three year prison sentence and a 5,000 pound fine. Okay, the night before that climb, we were planning the route and the timing essentially. And the pressure in that room was unreal. I can literally feel the intensity. We checked the map, we saw our route that we could potentially take, a few routes actually, and we came to a conclusion. We went to sleep early-ish and then we set an alarm for 2 a.m. Woke up 2 a.m., caught an Uber to the middle of nowhere basically. It was pitch black. Um, we were met with a fence, obviously throwing ourselves over this fence. Um, the whole desert was moonlit, so it was kind of vibey, but at the same time it's kind of scary as well. with the desert you've got hills now at the top of the hills um, you stand out like a sore thumb it's basically your silhouette against the sky now as you could imagine we were very very slowly going through the desert our eyes were peeled there was no activity around us every two minutes we'd stop and check like basically a whole 360 the desert is such a it's such a place where you've just got to be so aware of your surroundings so we were constantly stopping watching what's around us what's in the distance and listening um, at one point we also passed the tombs which was quite frightening actually it was quite terrifying because if i just felt like in my head i just felt like someone's just going to jump out at me the pyramids themselves it was almost like an illusion because they felt so close but they were actually so far Okay, now roughly after about 40 minutes of sneaking through the desert, we finally got to the pyramid. Now, if you've been to the pyramids before, you will know that there's a road that separates the desert to the pyramid. Now, this was the tricky part because there was security almost at every corner of the pyramid and this road was completely clear and we have to cross this road. The road is completely empty. Every 15 minutes, we observe that there's police or an emergency vehicle going by. We see armed guards patrolling with their torches and their rifles. 
Um, so at this point, we're just observing. We're hid behind a rock. We're observing what's going on in this road, what kind of activity goes on, what kind of windows have we got to run across this road and get across to the pyramid. Now, as you can imagine, 10 minutes go by observing, another 10 minutes go by, another 10 minutes go by, and all of this waiting is causing so much pressure. We just didn't know what the right time was. The last thing we wanted to do is sabotage this whole mission by literally getting seen going across this road. Okay, now the time was right. We were ready to go. I poked my head over the rock. No one was there. The road was completely empty. I pulled my head down. I looked over to my friend and I explained, this is our time, we need to go. So just before that, I had a feeling to look over that rock one more time. I look over the rock and to my right hand side, I see a armed guard patrolling without a torch. And I just about made out the silhouette. He's around 20 meters away from me. I can literally just about make out that there's a figure there. I can tell the way he's holding his rifle as well. At this point, I pulled my head down straight away. My heart was beating through my mouth. It was almost like a sickening feeling. If if we sent that, if we sent that across the road, we would have got seen in plain sight by this armed guard, possibly even shot at. My entire body was in shock at that point. So we gave it some time, did a few more observations, and we slowly realized that after every security car goes past and every guard goes past, there's a window that we have around a 10, 10 minute window that we have that we can just send it across the road. Hopefully no one sees us. So gave it some time, an armed guard walked past. As soon as he was out of sight, we ran across this road as fast as possible. I started clambering up that pyramid as fast as I could. Now the pyramids themselves, they're, they're about up to my shoulders. So it was almost like I was pulling myself up. It's, it's like doing a push-up. It's like doing a hundred push-ups to the top of the pyramid. Now we had to be very careful with the pyramid because we couldn't climb up from the corner because like I said, we would have been a silhouette against the, the sky. So the armed guards that were patrolling, they would have seen us right away. And the pyramid is one of those ones where you've got to be vigilant the whole way. It's not like a building once you're in, once you're up to like 20 floors up, you're completely fine. With the pyramid, of course, you're going up to one point and you've got to make your way down as well. So if you're seen either going up or coming down, you'll get caught straight away they'll see you from like a mile away. Once I pulled myself up onto that final rock and I was at the peak, the very peak of the Egyptian pyramid, it wasn't just the pressures of the climb that paid off, it was what, knowing what I was stood on. The blood, sweat and tears gone into building this. It was built 4,000 years ago. No one, absolutely no one knows how. It's one of the greatest mysteries of human history and I was stood on top of it. Looking across, being on par with the other pyramids simply had me in awe. Like all my senses were alive, my heart was racing. It was a euphoric victory after so much planning and feeling. We spent around 40 minutes on top of the pyramids, getting photos, living in the moment, and then it was time to get down. That's when the fear was instilled. Um, it wasn't the climb itself, it was getting out of the entire vicinity unseen. Climbing down is a little bit more techy, it's a bit more noisy. You basically have to drop down every step, very carefully though. And all it took is for one rock to crumble and drop from the top to the bottom. And that was enough noise for them to know that you were there. So 20 minutes later, we're at the scary road again. And to be fair, we timed it right. We timed it right in terms of security going past, the emergency vehicle going past. So the window was literally perfect. We just had to run across the road. Now, one thing I didn't take into account in the desert was stray dogs. I've ran across this road and all I heard was barking. I thought, this is it, we're done, we're done. This is a guard dog, we're getting chased. I ran, my friend ran, we're weaving in between tombs. At one point we lost each other. We were going in the same general direction, so we met up with each other again, but we are going in that same direction. And then we came to the conclusion at the end when we met up that it was a stray dog because there was no security activity afterwards. There were no torches, both our hearts were racing still, uh, but we were slowly going back to where we entered the desert from. Before we got out of the desert, Uber was already called, we timed it right, hopped in that Uber, and the smiles, the, the relief, it felt as if we got away with murder. 
I got home, I showered, I woke up with the fattest smell the next morning. I can't tell you how excited I was. Sadly, the following day, my friend had to go. So I, the rest of my trip was pretty relaxed. Uh, all my missions were accomplished, so it had no stresses on me. Um, and I thought, you know what? Let me go and visit the pyramid in daytime. We didn't get caught. There was no risk there. I even rode a camel. Little did everyone in the entire desert know though, that the night previous, I was on top of that pyramid. Banging. So later on that day, I got myself a perfume to remind me of the excursion, remind me of the adventure, incredible adventure. Actually, this is the perfume itself and it's already finished. Oh, it smells incredible. It reminds me of the mission actually, I love it. So next day I flew out, incredible trip, eventful trip. I loved it. Egypt, you were a movie. Now I uploaded some photos online. Uh, I did get quite a bit of hate. I got a few butthurt people. Uh, there was one funny comment actually the comment went something like oh you've climbed the pyramid now you can't enter egypt again well quite frankly this is my merchandise if you don't know so if you are interested carefree the agenda is in the name don't let anybody tell you what to do live how you want if you'd like to support my merchandise you can follow the instagram right here let me know in the comments what you think of this video, whether you enjoyed it or not. Drop it a like, subscribe if this is the first time you're seeing my face on your screen, and I'll see you guys in the next video.